What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing on the bacon MLB DFS video for Saturday, June 10th. We are back. We're super excited. We just hit 50 likes on yesterday's video. I thought we weren't going to make it. We made it, so someone's going to win. So if you're new to the channel, anytime that our previous video gets at least 50 likes, we throw and you leave a comment, we throw your name in the random.org. And we get you in there. We randomize it three times, and the winner is on the third time. If the video gets 100 likes, it is a MLB month pass. And if the video gets 150 likes, someone will win the entire MLB DFS season. Brought to you by Fantasy Team Advisors for just liking a video, being a subscriber, and leaving a comment. So super simple, super easy. Welcome back if you guys have been here before, or welcome for the first time. We've had a lot of new subscribers here on YouTube, and the website has been awesome. So if you are watching this video, I would absolutely love to know, how did you guys find us? Word of mouth? Share? Was it on Twitter? Was it just on the front of YouTube? I'm really curious how, where you guys uh, found this channel. And if you like it, if you find it helpful, hit that subscribe button, like this video, leave us some questions, comments down below, I'll try to answer them. So before we get started, we're going to look at this. These are everyone on the list from yesterday that left a comment. So we're going to randomize it three times and the winner will be on the third time. So good luck to everybody. One, two, and the winner of the free MLB week is Tim Mills. Congratulations, Tim Mills. Like this video, comment here, and then hit me up on Twitter at advisors underscore team. We'll get you set up with a username and a password, and you'll get the week for MLB DFS. So good job, everyone that has tried. Keep going. You can win every day. As long as the videos get at least 50 likes and you leave a comment, you could win every single day. Another way to do it, like the video, be a subscriber, and tell me who's going to hit home run and what inning are they going to hit it in, and put the distance traveled as a tiebreaker. It's crazy. No one listened to me yesterday's video. I said Rafael Devers, almost a lock for a home run. Book it. Home run, I think, in like the fifth or sixth inning. Um, no one took that one. But a lot of people did take the Gary Sanchez. Um, but I said the lock was Devers, and he hit one. I believe it was off Cole as well. So um, hopefully we, we find something like that again today. Another diamond in the rough, as they say. So we're going to break it down. If you don't know what we do, we go through all of the games on the slate. So it's a Saturday. It's a full day, 15 games. So with Saturday, it is broken up between like early. You can do it all day early and then main. So we're going to go through everything. If you sign up on uh, fantasyteamadvisors.com for the month pass, all of our stuff right now <clears throat> normally is the main slate. Um, once we get to football season, I'm thinking about doing changing up a little bit. So I would love to know. I said it in yesterday's video, but with NFL content, you know, so watch this video. So we break down the games and stuff like that. With football, what would you guys like to see? Now, depending on when it is, it's very hard to go game by game. Um kind of in the same breakdown as this because it's just not the same but I'm 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 ready I'm looking for what you guys would like to see so let me know what you are interested in DFS wise uh with football so first game today Diamondbacks at the Tigers you got Ryan Nelson versus Matt Boyd Nelson's never faced them before he's got a plus matchup here uh, against Detroit which I do really like uh Boyd's only faced nine plate appearances 125 the way we're going, I absolutely I, every day seems like it's a Diamondback stack. They're really good this year somehow. Corbin Carroll's on fire. Um, first pitch of the game on Friday, home run. He had uh, he had two home runs that I saw, and it's it's just awesome um, the way they're doing it. So I'm not looking at Matt Boyd. I'm I'm looking at Ryan Nelson for cash or GPP, probably more GPP, but for cash and SP2 on DraftKings. And then I am looking for just a stack. So depending on what lineup comes out, Cattell Marte is there. Uh, Christian Walker against the lefty, I like. Corbin Carroll, lefty, lefty, I don't care. I like that. Guriel Jr., if he is in there. Longoria, if he's in there. Uh, just a lot of things that I do like uh, about a Arizona stack in this one. Marlins at the White Sox is next. You got Sandy Alcantara versus Michael Kopech. Alcantara has only faced six batters, 167. He's looked 
No, he doesn't look like the Cy Young winner pitcher that he's he was. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he's hurt. I I don't know. He's not looking as dominant. I will have exposure to him, but I'm not as confident in Alcantara as I have been in the past. He's just not looking the best. Um, whatever it is. So again, we're breaking all these games down. We're not looking at weather. Weather's not a concern. Uh, we do have weather uh, as part of the. Uh, um, the ballpark ratings that you can find on the website. So weather will be updated. It's usually updated by the very latest 9 a.m. Central. So you should be you should be seeing everything there. Um, I'll take Alcantara for for GPPs. Cash, it, it's hard to. Uh, Kopech, on the other hand, um, 24 plate appearances, 16.7 K percentage, 318 batting average. Just looking to see who's had. I mean, Luis Arise, three for nine. I mean. Arise is getting hits every single day. So that's what I would be looking at there. Other ones I'd look at, Guriel maybe, Solaire, De La Cruz, Sanchez. Really just depends. Got to wait for the uh, – not real confident right now about any of the Marlins bouts outside of Arise um, until batter trends, Vegas numbers come out. So that's kind of my thought on this game right here. Next game, Reds at the Cardinals, Andrew Abbott versus Miles Mikolas. We saw the Cardinals uh, start off well in the game um, yesterday. Andrew Abbott's never faced him before. I'll take a flyer on Andrew Abbott, but Cardinals have left or righty bats that can hit lefties. Uh, Arenado, Goldschmidt, um, Contreras, if if he's if he's on, he's been off more than he's been on this year so far. Um, I, that's kind of my thought. Um, I would take Abbott as a contrarian option, probably a little bit, but I'm not going to have much exposure there. Flip side of that, Miles Miklas against the Reds, 77 plate appearances, 203 batting average, 19 half K percentage. I'll take a flyer on him. Again, though, the Reds have been hitting, but they're not at home. They're at, in St. Louis. So I give that as the, um, the edge to Mikolas because it's in St. Louis, but I don't love it. So I think both of these pitchers are only tournament options here. But again, if you're taking Cardinals bats, I'm looking at Goldie, Arenado, Contreras, Tommy Edmond, depending on where he's at in the lineup. Um, and then, yeah, they're, they've got some injuries. So it's whoever gets in there, you know, you got to look for a fourth or a fifth if you're on. FanDuel or on DraftKings. So wait till the lineups come out, kind of see how it's made, then kind of make your decision there. Next game, Twins at the Blue Jays. You got Joe Ryan versus as of right now, to be announced. I have exposure to Joe Ryan a little bit. Again, Toronto's bats are good. They've been off this year, but they are good when they're on. Um, but I'll have some exposure to Ryan, probably only tournament. We'll look at it a little bit more once the batter trends and everything else comes out during the day. Um, so looking at that, I don't know who the pitcher is going to be for Toronto. If it's someone good, maybe I'll have uh, exposure to him again. When that is posted, we will have the batter trends out there with the pitcher. We will have the Vegas odds out there with the pitcher there and the ballpark rankings will also have the pitcher there too. And as of now, without knowing no real twins bats jump out to me. Padres at the Rockies, Ryan Weathers versus Kyle Freeland. Weathers, 18 plate appearance, 375. I don't like a pitcher in Coors um, unless they're a huge stud. Neither of these guys are. Uh, I will be looking to stack against them. Probably if we can stack this game, I don't mind. Um, Gary Sanchez in Colorado again against the lefty. Sign me up there. Uh, Machado, same thing. Bogart, same thing. Um, flip side of that, just depending on what, what Rockies bats are out there, Ryan McMahon jumps out to me the top of the list right there. Um, and then, let's see, 18 plate appearances is not a lot, so there's not a ton there. Uh, so, yeah, so McMahon, two for four with a home run. Charlie Blackman, two for seven with a double and a home run. Even if it's a lefty on lefty, Blackman could be in a good spot there. So I don't mind him. Elias Diaz, if he is starting, I don't mind him either. So those are kind of some of the Colorado bats. Obviously, there are more. We'll kind of wait to see the lineups that come out, and if it lines up well against the lefty, we can revisit that when those come out. Next game, Royals at the Orioles. you got Brady Singer versus Cole Irvin. Brady Singer, 19 plate appearances, 412 batting average, so not much. Um, 
And then Cole Irvin, 25 plate appearances, 292 batting average there. You know, I, no, I'm not going to have exposure to either of these guys in pitching. I will look at some of the bats. It pains me to say it, but Aaron Hicks, very cheap option. He's been doing well. He does better from the right side than the left. 0 for 3 against Brady Singer, but again, um, he'll be a lefty here, so I don't mind that. Adam Frazier, 2 for 6 with two doubles. Uh, Mount Castle. Anytime you're looking at the Orioles, you're always going to want, if you're stacking the Orioles, you're always going to want at least Adley and Mount Castle in there. And then depending on who else is in there, a Santander, if you want to get cheaper, uh, Aaron Hicks. Um, but he's still, it's still Aaron Hicks. He's still batting like 180 or something like that. So that is definitely something to monitor. But... Um, that's kind of where I'm at there. Some of the bats for the Orioles, I'm not too thrilled about, but we got to see, um, especially when the Vegas numbers come out. And then the Royals bats against Irvin, Matt Duffy, eight, three for eight, Bobby Witt Jr. One for six with a triple. If Bobby gets on stolen base, Salvi against a lefty two for six with a home run. I don't mind him there either, but I won't have exposure to either of these pitchers. They will not be in my player pool when I build in lineups. Mets at the Pirates, you got Kodai Singa versus Johan Oviedo. Uh, Mets, Mets suck. There, there's no way around it. Um, the Pirates just put up double digits against them on Friday. It was against Meagle, so okay. Singa's better, I, I will say that. I will have exposure to Singa just because of how good he can be. The problem is... He can't get the W, can't get those extra points if he's not getting run support. Um, that's where I'm a little weary about this one. I will have exposure to Singa. He's got the strikeout potential. He's got a juicy match, quote-unquote juicy matchup against a terrible Pirates team who just put up double digits on Friday. So I will put this with caution. But if I'm taking a pitcher out of these two, I'm taking Singa probably... Probably no bats in this one. Kind of got to wait to see. No one sticks out in my mind. Um, if we're looking at Mets bats against Oviedo, Lindor probably is a good one. Let's see. Real quick. Nimmo, two for four. Escobar, one for six. Tommy Pham, one for two with a home run. Jeff McNeil, one for four. Lindor, one for three. Yeah, I wouldn't stack this game. If I'm taking batters in this one, maybe Tommy Pham, maybe... Lindor, but there are just other options out there. So I'm sticking more towards Singa, and then whatever happens, happens with the bats later. Dodgers at the Phillies is next. Bobby Miller versus Aaron Nola. Nola has been an enigma. He has had good games when we've used him, then he's had terrible games when we used him. He hasn't been as – it's been a couple years since I felt like Aaron Nola was that stud. He's, you know, ready to go. He's a very dependable guy. That's where my problem is. And now he faces the Dodgers, which is not an easy task because they are hitting very well. Um, I won't have exposure to Bobby Miller. I might throw in Nola just because in tournaments because I think he'll be lower owned because he is going up against the Dodgers, who are a very good team. The flip side of that, if you're looking at Dodgers bats against Nola, who've had success in 216 plate appearances, struck out 19.4% of those batters and a 232 batting average. Freeman, 16 for 69. So 217 of those plate appearances, 77 of them are Freeman because Freeman was with the Braves. Um, lefty on righty matchup. Freeman, 16 for 69, four doubles, two home runs. Would not be surprised if Freeman hits a home run. Um, I am big into when we're sports betting. I am looking at like two-plus total bases. So Freeman, in my mind, two-plus total bases would be one of my bets for him. Miguel Ro Rojas, 10 for 33, two doubles. Um, Muncy is actually one for 18 with 10 strikeouts. Chris Taylor, two for 12 with triple. Um, Mookie Betts, five for 16 with a double and two home runs. I do like Mookie here. So if you're not going with uh, Nola as a pitcher, I would be looking at some of these bats here. I mean, J.D. Martinez is absolutely on fire right now. Uh, if he's not hitting home runs, I look in the box score, he's hitting doubles. And they're RBI doubles too. So I'd be looking at a Freeman, a Martinez, um, Mookie here. Just depending on who's out there, David Peralta, 5 for 9. Miguel Vargas, 1 for 3 with a home run. James Altman, 1 for 3 with a double. James Altman apparently is a very hot rookie baseball card. If you are into collecting cards, apparently he's the guy to get in the Topps flagship Series 2 that just came out. Um, he started off really good. 
he's kind of cooled off a little bit. He's not as red hot as he was. But, I mean, if he's in there, it just depends on what the what the outfield looks like because there are just so many outfield options for um, the Dodgers that we kind of got to see. So I'll have a little bit of exposure to Aaron Nola just to be off the field a little bit, but I'll definitely be looking at a Dodger stack as well in other lineups. Rangers at the Rays is next. Nate Evaldi versus Taj Bradley. Evaldi facing his old team. Uh, plate appearances, 66 plate appearances, a 190 batting average, 22.7K percentage. I like Evaldi here. He has been dominating this whole season. Um, I think people will be a little bit off of him because he is facing Tampa Bay at home. But I like Texas against Taj Bradley. I like Evaldi against Tampa Bay here. So that's kind of what I'll be looking at. I will say that <clears throat> would not be surprised if Tampa Bay dominates him. But he's super expensive because he's been good. I'm trying to see. Um, and we've used Evaldi, I want to say, every single start for the past three weeks, three or four weeks that he's started. Um, so if it's been twice a week that he started, we used him. Um, I do like Evaldi here. Taj Bradley, you could throw him in tournaments. Again, though, I think he'll be very low on because of how good Texas bats are and have been the entire season. Bradley could give you that little edge. He's obviously cheaper than Evaldi on every single site, depending on where you're playing. So that's my thoughts. I think Evaldi is a cash option. I think Bradley is a tournament option. I could see you going either way with both of these teams. If you're looking, let's say you're trying to take bats against Evaldi here. So with Tampa Bay, I'd be looking at Yandy Diaz. I would be looking at a Rosarena, um, Taylor Walls. It depends on the lineup that comes out. On the flip side of that, if you're taking Texas bats against Bradley, I'm looking at the top. So I'm looking at Simeon. I'm looking at Jung. I'm looking at um, dependent Josh Lowe. Depending on what lineup comes out, Jonah Heim, even if it's a righty on righty matchup, that doesn't matter. We've got the options here. This is a game that could be a one nothing game or it could be a 10-9 game. That's the problem. Uh, kind of wait to see what the Vegas numbers say and all of that. Um, I would look at Evaldi for cash. I would look at Bradley for tournaments. And then if you're not using either of those, I don't mind using the bats in this one. Nationals at the Braves, McKenzie Gore versus Jared Schuster. Gore, 35 plate appearances, 207 batting average, 22.9K percentage. Schuster, 21 plate appearances, only a 4.8K percentage, 400 batting average against him. Probably will have zero exposure to either of these pitchers. Would be looking at the bats, specifically the Braves bats. So I would be looking at uh, Ozzy Albies. Uh, we got Riley, Matt Olson, lefty on lefty. I don't really care. Acuna at the top would not would not surprise me if Acuna leads the game off with a home run. At all, would not surprise me at all. See if we can go two for two on my not surprises. Yesterday was Devers. Today is Acuna. Love Acuna. Gonna have him in a home run. Uh, bet numbers i mean austin riley two for five with a double acuna's 0 for two don't care uh still think he homers albies two for five with a home run azuna one for four oh for four darno one for four so not a ton have had success but i'm definitely looking at olsen acuna riley albies azuna um against against mckenzie gore Oakland at the Brewers. You got Paul Blackburn versus Julio Tehran. I don't know how Tehran's been pitching how he has. I will have exposure to Tehran here because it's the A's. Okay. I I'm, I would say I, I would love this a little bit more if it were in Oakland, but obviously we can't get what we want. I will have Tehran. 10 plate appearances, 333 batting average, um, 20K percentage. So, yes, I will be looking at Tehran here for a pitching option cash gpp i don't care it's against oakland could oakland score 10 runs they could will they probably not so caution but if i'm taking one batter here or one pitcher in this game here tehran no bats really stick out to me right now so wait for the batter trends but maybe christian yelich against blackburn william Contreras there urias it just depends on who's out there um is what i would look at so i'm definitely leaning tehran here 
Astros at the Guardians, J.P. France versus Tristan McKenzie. France has never faced the Guardians before. And then McKenzie, 56 plate appearances, 240 batting average, 25K percentage. Now, yesterday's video, I said I will have exposure to Logan Allen for tournaments because Houston's missing some bats and this and that, and maybe they won't hit, but they hit. They did. Um, but I'm going back to the well. I'm looking at Tristan McKenzie. He is looking really good right now. Started on the IL for the season. Has come on strong, getting a ton of strikeouts there. I will take Tristan McKenzie against the Astros. Jordan Alvarez is out. He's on the IL for however long um, with, I think it was an oblique, which could be a while because obviously you use obliques for swinging a bat. Um, so that's my thought. I'll have McKenzie there a little bit. Um, no real bats right now. I mean, Jose Ramirez is one that always seems to pop off. I think he had three home runs Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so, yeah, I will definitely be looking at McKenzie here. Maybe some one-off bats in this game if I'm not using these. Um, but I wouldn't stack either of these teams right now. Cubs at the Giants is next. Kyle Hendricks versus to be announced. Problem is Hendricks, 80 plate appearances, 205 batting average. Not getting a ton of strikeouts. He's not getting enough strikeouts, I should say, to warrant using him as a pitcher, which sucks because would love to. But, yeah, um, wouldn't wouldn't use Hendricks. We obviously don't know who the other pitcher is, so we kind of got to wait to see. And no real bats jump out to me at the moment. If I were, say we are stacking against Hendricks, we want to take the Giants. I would look at Lamont, Lamont Wade Jr., uh, Conforto, Jock Peterson, Mitch Hanniger, unless he's hurt again already. It's kind of where I'd look at. I don't. I won't have exposure. I will not have any exposure. I have zero ownership of Kyle Hendricks on this slate. Next game: Red Sox at the Yankees. Tanner Houck versus Domingo Herman. Houck, fifty-one plate appearances, one thirty-six batting average, seventeen point six K percentage. Flip side of that: Domingo Herman, sixty-six plate appearances, twenty-five point eight K percentage, and a two forty-two batting average. Kind of like Herman here. Um, he was suspended for using too much rosin or whatever. Then he's come back and he's had some good games. Um, he's looked good. His strikeouts are there. The Red Sox are not a really good team. The Yankees didn't hit much on Friday. The Red Sox really didn't hit much on Friday either. I would still take Herman over Hauk in this one. So give me the Herman. And then you could be looking at Yankees bats. Depending on what bats, what lineup comes out there. Glaber, um, Rizzo, Stanton. Mar uh, uh, you've got Josh Donaldson is off the IL and just coming on strong, which looks really good because um, his numbers are really low. So his price is still relatively low for the player he could be. Um, Jake Bowers, if he's in there, seems like he's having a resurgence. Um, there's a lot of cheap options right now with this lineup, with this outfield for the Yankees being probably Willie Calhoun, Jake Bowers, uh, IKF. It's, it's crazy to think about. We are, what, a month, two months into the season, and those are the two, uh, those are the three outfield, starting outfielders for the Yankees. So cheap options for the Yankees. You could be able to build around them. Um, but the team can also strike out too. So that's something to monitor. But in this game, I would take Herman for cash or tournaments. And you could look at Hauk for tournaments uh, just in case uh, the Yankees strike out a ton in this one. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thought process in this one. Mariners at the Angels is the final game on the slate. Brian Wu coming off an absolutely terrible outing. I think he pitched last Saturday. So I think he pitched a week ago. Now he's going up against the Angels. Patrick Sandoval, 92 plate appearances, 212 batting average, 19.6 K percentage. I really wanted to see, um, let's see, Wu, Brian Wu, let's see what he did. Yeah, against, and it, I mean, it was against Texas, and they're a really good team. Two innings, 18 K per nine because he had two innings, 27 ERA there. I think he gave up, I can't remember how many he gave up. Let's see real quick. June 3rd. Yeah, he pitched last Saturday against Texas. Now, against Texas, I mean, Texas did end up winning 16-6. to So, you know, 
not completely his fault, but give up six earned runs and two innings, seven hits. But he did have four strikeouts in those two innings, so a couple strikeouts there. Um, this team, though, here, Angels aren't as good, obviously, as Texas, and that's that's the whole idea. Um, I probably won't have Wu. Probably won't have Sandoval. Um, if I'm looking at him, probably would look at the Angels more bats. So look at Otani, looking at more of um, Trout, Drury, Gio, Urshela if he's playing. Uh, with Anthony Rendon back, I don't know where Gio fits in there, so that's kind of something to look at. Um, kind of what I would think. So I'm not saying 100% I would stack the Angels, but I would look at the Angels here uh, against Brian Wu. Or you could play devil's advocate and take Wu because his ownership is probably pretty low uh, considering what he just did. But he looked outside of the runs. I mean, four strikeouts and two innings throughout that whole thing kind of I guess you a little light at the end of the tunnel um, so I, I could see you taking woo for tournaments and praying but again hopefully you pray really well because I wouldn't trust woo against the angel I wouldn't trust woo against anyone right now to be completely honest and there you have it there is the breakdown there are all of the pitchers that are currently available on the slate we will have um, with other things out there we will look at we have the Vegas odds coming out. We have the uh, the ballpark ratings coming out. We have we'll have the weather, so we know kind of where we need to go or pivot. We'll have the batter trends, which shows um, the batter against the same handedness pitcher they're facing on this slate in their last 50 plate appearances, 100 and 150 plate appearances. And my suggestion would be to take that. And the two categories I would look at on the batter trends are the WOBA and the ISO power. So you can sort it. When you get through it, you can hit the sort button and you can see who's at the highest. And then you can kind of sort it through there. You can take those batter trends and then you can compare it to the um, the ballpark ratings to see what ballparks give up the most amount of runs or whatever you're looking for. And then you can look at the Vegas odds and you can see what teams are projected to score the most amount of runs and then what teams are projected to score the least amount of runs. And you can kind of get rid of the teams that are Vegas thinks will score the least amount of runs so you can get that player pool out of there kind of start building your own player pool up and building your own lineups through there so that's all I've got for this if you have any more questions or you want just a little bit more help you can look at fantasyteamadvisor.com you can sign up for $10 a month right now or you can sign up for $39.99 for the DFS and sports betting and once All-Star Break comes, it will go up to $25 a month because we will start putting out NFL content for you. So, again, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully we have a fantastic Saturday DFS. And as always, guys, you know what to do. Let's bring home the bacon. Peace.